What is on tap at Coos's Corner today? We're talking conference realignment again. We're going to take a look at Boise State and Memphis. And will they be good additions to the Big 12 should the Big 12 decide to expand again? So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let me serve you up this shot. Top shelf. College football conference. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to another edition of Coos's Corner. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let's dig in to this topic, which is Boise State and Memphis. Would they be good additions to the Big 12? I got this video idea from several of my, my viewers. I did this a similar video on San Diego State the other day. A lot of you wanted me to look at Memphis, so I decided to look at Memphis, and I had a couple people that also wanted me to look at Boise State. So I'm also taking a look at Boise State, and I decided I'll just do, do them both in one video and compare them side by side, and I'll even include San Diego State in the comparison. Then at the end of the video, I'll give you my opinion on whether I think either of these schools would be good additions to the conference. So let's get into it. First, let's take a look at Boise State. All right, here we go. Anything in red means they are worse than the average of the new Big 12, which obviously excludes Texas and Oklahoma. And anything that's not in red means that they're as good or better than the average of the new Big 12. Average academic ranking, I use the average of the U.S. News and World Report rankings to make one number. As you can see, Boise State is the 400, has an average academic ranking of 476. The average in the new Big 12 is 217. Average TV viewers per week. Boise State's at 500,000. Big 12, 875,000. That would put Boise State at 10th in the new Big 12 and average TV viewers per week, ahead of only Kansas and Cincinnati. As far as academics, they would be at the bottom of the league. Let's look at average fan base size rank. Boise State sits at 54th. The average in the new Big 12 is 55, so they would actually fit in there. They would be about middle of the pack, would be fifth in the new Big 12 in fan base size ranks. Football five-year ranking. Now, this is more than just wins and losses on the field. This is the value, the overall value of their football program. These numbers come, once again, as always, from Mr. Tony Altimore, the strategy consultant who, who's been on my show before. You see him on all the, a lot of the college football YouTube channels and podcasts. So I've got to give him credit for these numbers. He uses about 10 different metrics to get these numbers, so it's not just wins and losses. But Boise State is number 12 in the, in the country in football five-year ranking now. So that's really good, and that would by far be the top in the new Big 12 where they'd be a member. So very, very good in that category. Uh, and TV households, I added this one in in the last video, TV households, Boise State, about 310,000 households in the Boise, Idaho market compared to a, an 80, 810,000 household average in the new Big 12. That would put Boise State last in the new Big 12 as Boise is the 101st size media market in the country. Now let's look at Memphis. Average academic rank, Memphis 405, slightly ahead of Boise State, would still be last in the new Big 12. Average TV viewers per week, 600,000, slightly better than Boise State, but still not good enough to be better than 10th in the new Big 12. They would be tied for UCF in that category. Average fan base size rank, Memphis would be 77th. That would be ranked number 11 in the new Big 12, ahead of only Houston. Football five-year ranking, Memphis would be 44, so not, not not as good as Boise State, who was at 12, but they would fit in in the new Big 12, and they would be sixth in the league, so about middle of the pack. And TV households, they about double what Boise had, but still only about 620,000 households in Memphis, in the Memphis area, which is 51st in the country as far as how big the media market is, according to Nielsen, Nielsen ratings. So not a huge TV market, but it would be decent. Uh, would still be bottom bottom third in the new Big 12 conference as far as market size. So now let's look at them together. Look at these two schools, and I left San Diego State on there as well so you can get an idea. Now let's look at the heat map that Tony uses where I get all this data from to accumulate. This, this kind of shows you where Memphis and Boise State, and I'm zooming in for you here a little bit, so you can get a better idea. This will show you where they fit in in each category compared to the current Big 12 teams. So here, as you can see, 
a lot of red at the top when it, when it comes to academics for, for these two schools. But once you get down closer to the performance on the field and market, they fit right in. Both of these schools do. So now, let's look at pros and cons of each one of these schools. And I'll tell you whether I think they are fit or not. First of all, let's look at Boise State. The pros for Boise State, you'd get into a new market in Boise, Idaho. Not a big market, but a new market nonetheless. You could capture all the fam, all the fans in that immediate market, all the television sets as well. Uh, it's a decent sized fan base, but they're they're not a huge fan base. But they're a very passionate fan base. Boise State fans love their Broncos, man. Big Blue Nation is strong. They're loud. They're passionate, and I think they'll show up to games, and I think they'll watch the games on television. Uh, I think Boise State's a good brand. I think you just look at the brand as a whole. Uh, take everything else out of the equation. When you think Boise State, what do you think? You think college football. And I think, you know, they've had a lot of success on the field. They've won a lot of big games, a lot of BCS games against Power 5 opponents, against Blue Blood Power 5 opponents at that. Never forget the BCS Bowl win over Oklahoma, the Statue of Liberty play. Ever, it's one of the uh, – probably one of the biggest upsets in college football history, arguably. So just a huge win for them. And uh, that, that was not the only one they had, and they just won consistently over the past 10 to 20 years as Boise State. And then you can't forget the blue turf. I mean, a lot of people make fun of the blue turf, but, man, it's a trademark, and a trademark that gets them, it gets them attention, and it, and it makes people want to flip on the television screen to say, hey, I wonder, what's that blue turf look like on television? I've done it, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, it's, it's something they can use to market their brand and their, and their school and their football program, and I think they've done a pretty good job at it. So I think that's a plus. They have an athletic department that's on the rise. They're getting ready to invest several hundred million dollars into a new athletic uh, improvements project. They're calling it the Athletics Master Village. Including in that will be in expanding their football stadium to hold up to 40,000 people with hopes of extending it in the future to about 60,000 capacity. So uh, big plans for Boise State in that regard. They have a, a new AD named Jeremiah Dickey who's a superstar. Learned under better AD Mac Rhodes. We know the kind of job he's doing there. Their president. Linda Livingstone is also a superstar in college athletics as far as the president goes, and really not even athletics, but just college presidents in general. She's a superstar, one of the most well-respected, well-liked presidents in the country. And then I think Boise State just culturally would be a fit in the Big 12 Conference. Now the cons, uh, the academics is a con, but really, I, 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 who cares, right? Who cares about academics, especially in the Big 12? There are some conferences who, who do. Big 12 doesn't look at it as hard and as seriously uh, as the other conferences, and that's not a bad thing. That's just the mission of that conference is different, okay? It's not good or bad. Each conference has a different mission, has a different uh, different things they're trying to accomplish, different vision, so to speak. Then you've got the small market size is, is a downfall, but uh, that being said, Boise, Idaho is, if you look it up, Boise, Idaho is one of the fastest-growing cities in America. It's a small city, but it's growing at a rapid pace. So there's upside to this. Boise is a small market, but it's a growing market. And then, like I said, the TV viewership numbers aren't great, but you got to take that with a grain of salt because these group of five teams get most of their games put on at bad times where there's not as many viewers or they get put on these secondary networks like FS2, ESPNU, these networks that people have to have subscriptions, paid subscriptions to, to watch it. And a casual football fan who uh, is not real serious about college football but just likes to watch a game, you know, one of the game of Saturday or once in a while when he's flipping, flipping through the channels, they're not going to purchase ESPNU and FS2 as part of the sports package. So if it's not on ABC, ESPN, Fox, they're not going to watch it. And most of these group of five games get stuck on these secondary networks. So these TV viewership numbers are really not – you have to take them into context because the time of day the game is on, and especially the channel it's on, makes a huge impact on these numbers. Now, pros and cons for Memphis. Memphis is in a new market. It will give you in a new market in West West Tennessee, uh, not too far from where the heart of your conference is in the Midwest. Uh, it, but it would still be an e somewhat of an eastward expansion. Would get you a little bit closer to Cincinnati and West Virginia, not extremely close, but uh, closer than they are to the other schools. And then you've got uh, Memphis has got a solid football program, not a great football program, but it's not bad. They do win. Like I said, they were 44th in the country, I think it was, in football five year rank. Basketball. When you when you talk about Memphis, you have to talk about basketball. I got my wrist slapped a little bit in the comment section for not doing that with San Diego State, and I apologize to San Diego State fans. I didn't mention the quality of your basketball program. 
we all know uh, football is what drives a bus here, but basketball is important. So I, I, I need to touch on it here. When I think Memphis Tigers, I think basketball. I think Penny Hardaway. I think the days under John Calipari and the, you know all the winning they had under him. That's what I think when I hear Memphis. Uh, they they would actually, as far as basketball tenure ranking, which is what Tony does on his charts, they would be 25th in the country, which would be the second best in the new Big 12 Conference. So they would be a really strong addition from a basketball perspective. Uh, and then you've got uh, improvements to their stadium as well. We all know the Liberty Bowl. It, it's had its ups and downs, man. The I think it was built around 1965. It's an old stadium. hasn't been upgraded in forever. Uh, that's that's probably kept Memphis from getting some consideration for Power Five conferences in the past. But they have announced earlier this year they do plan to put about two hundred million dollars into renovations at the Liberty Bowl. Uh, don't, I don't think it's going to expand seating necessarily, but the stadium already holds fifty eight thousand, so there's really no need to do that. That would already be big enough for this conference. But they are going to renovate it, make it more modern, make some changes that will just make it a better game day experience for for spectators and for fans. And I think that's a good thing and would go a long way in helping Memphis be more attractive to these Power Five conferences. And then the cons for Memphis, uh, obviously academics, but like I said, who cares? TV viewership is not that great, just okay. Uh, not that big of a fan base. And then uh, some of the same cons as, as – really some of the same cons as Boise State, If you as you go down this list. They're, they do have a slightly bigger TV market than, than Boise State. They're 51st in the country, like I said. So in Memphis, but still not a huge TV market, and it's a TV market. It is growing some, uh, but still not a huge market. So that being said, what are my opinions? Well, first let's touch on uh, Boise State. What do I think Boise State's a good candidate for expansion? I do. I do think Boise State. If if my first choice would be for the Big Twelve, if they have the option to to go get some of these Pac twelve schools, if they're if they're looking for a home, if not. If you need to expand, if the TV networks tell you, hey, you'll get more value if you expand, Boise State is probably my first choice. Obviously, as a West Virginia fan, I would love for him to get a team closer to us. But if you look at this, just taking taking my uh, fandom out of this and looking at it from the perspective of the Big 12 Conference, if I'm Brett Yormark or if I'm these presidents of the Big 12, if I want to make the conference stronger and the networks tell me, hey, you, you need to add some teams, even if they're a group of five teams, I'm looking at Boise State, and like I said, they're, even though their market's small, their fan base isn't massive, and they're in a small city. They have a their brand is is arguably you could argue argue that Boise State is the top Group of Five brand in the country. I think you could argue Boise State has been the most consistent non Power Five program in the country, and I think they deserve a spot at the big boy table. I think they've earned it. They do have some work to do on the academic side. But everything else, they're doing better at. They're they're improving their sports, their athletic programs. They're improving their facilities. They're hiring the right people to lead the athletic department in Jeremiah Dickey. They're doing. They're pressing all the right buttons right now. And I think Boise State needs to be rewarded for their work, for their efforts, and their success. And I think they should be the first telephone call. There's a lot of upside with Boise State, and their fans would watch games on Saturdays. I'm telling you, they would love to tune in and watch them against Big 12 competition. And as far as Memphis goes, I hate to say it, Memphis fans, I'm sorry, no disrespect, but I just don't think Memphis would work. I don't think Memphis is a big enough brand. Basketball doesn't move a needle enough. Uh, Memphis is not an attractive enough market. It's not a San Diego. Look, I personally think San Diego State would be a better get than Memphis myself. I don't know if the Big 12 can get San Diego State because I think the Pac-12 is probably going after them hard as well. Uh, but I think uh, I don't think Memphis would, would be as valuable because it's just not as big a, a market. Now, San, I know the San Diego State fan base is not as passionate, probably, as Memphis fans are. But, man, getting into that California market is a big deal to, the, to these TV networks. And also, it gets these teams into the California recruiting area, these teams out, out of the southwest, western part of the country, uh, or in the Midwest, even. It, helps, it would help them recruit California, potentially. So, I don't hear anybody talking about going to recruit in Memphis, Tennessee. No offense, Memphis. Now, look, I don't hear that about Boise, Idaho, either. But like I said, Boise's got the brand. Memphis's brand is basketball. And that's not moving the needle, folks. I'm sorry. I get a lot of flack from when I do these videos about group of five teams. I hear fan bases going, well, we don't need to add any group of five teams. It waters down the league. And I hear, and, and let's think about this, folks. TCU, 
were they not a group of five team? Or, or, or they were, it was called non BCS back then, but they were a group of five team, what, 10, 12 years ago? Now look where they are. Utah, for crying out loud, Utah was in the Mountain West Conference. They were a group of five team 10, 12 years ago, whatever, whatever the time frame was. And look how far they've come. Sometimes all these programs need is, is a boost. You give them a financial boost by putting them in a Power Five conference, man, they, they might soar. They might be the best team in your conference in the next five to ten years. I don't think it's fair to hold these teams down just because they're, well, they're not a Power Five school. Well, maybe they, maybe they should be. Did we ever think about that? Maybe they should be a Power Five school. Maybe they're not a Power Five school for the wrong reasons. Well, let me know, Cousins Corner family, what do you think about this? Do you think Boise State and or Memphis brings value to the Big 12? Would you like to see them in the Big 12? I want your opinion on this. Also, don't forget to check out my merch store. Link's at the top of the description box. I've got shirts. I've got T-shirts, hoodies, tank tops. I've got female, clothes for women, clothes for men, clothes for kids, clothes for babies, clothes for your pets. For crying out loud, I've got uh, dog bandanas over there. So go check out my merch store. You'll find something there you like, either either in the West Virginia JD design or the American, two different American flag designs I have. I have some more designs I'm going to be working on real soon. I've been brainstorming some ideas. I think you're really going to like. So hopefully that'll be out in the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Also, hit the join button right below. Shout out to new member, and I hope I don't butcher this guy's name because I'm doing this off the cuff. David Riggs, thank you for your membership, man. Thank you for becoming the newest member of Kuz's Corner. Uh, I really appreciate your support. For those of you who can't support me financially, you can support me four other ways. Absolutely free. You can like this video, share the video, comment under the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. All four of those help me out. If you're listening to this on podcast platform, can't leave out the podcast platform. I'm sorry. I've done that in the past. I'm on Spotify, Apple, uh, Anchor, Amazon. I'm on all different podcast platforms. Please follow me. Please support me here. Uh, I'll check, check out the links in the description box to my, to my uh, merch store. With that being said, until the next show, Q Country Roads.